Hello everyone. I'm Tracy Heidersuffer, an executive director here at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. I'm so happy you're joining us today for this very special presentation in partnership with M3, Mutual Mentor for Musicians. The work M3 is doing is powerful and essential work to bring equity and visibility to historically underrepresented groups in jazz. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the co-founders of M3, Sarah Serpa and Jen Shu. Hi, we are so excited to have you with us today for this first day of world premieres from this truly exceptional cohort of musicians. Before we begin, um, a reminder that if you love what you see and hear today, please do consider supporting our next cohort with a donation and help us keep this new paradigm of mutual mentorship going. Yes, we want to thank uh, New Music USA for co-commissioning these cohorts new works. And also huge thanks to Nancy and Joe Walker and MediaD Foundation. I'm really excited to introduce you to our host for today, the amazing Jordana Elizabeth. Jordana is Mutual Mentorship for Musicians Editor-in-Chief, and she edited our first anthology of writings called The Art of Being True. You can find this anthology on Jordana's uh, uh, literary arts organization's website, publicprivate.org, or on our own website, mutualmentorshipformusicians.org. And now, without further ado, here's Jordan Elizabeth. Hello, everybody, and welcome to day one of the M3 Festival. We are so excited to have you. We have amazing artists from all over the world who will be presenting their compositions um, and their beautiful duo pieces. We are so excited to have you and I am Jordana Elizabeth. I know I've already been introduced, but I am the editor in chief of M3 and it's been an honor to work with all of these women. I wanna thank Jen and Sara so much. And without further ado, we're gonna get started. Coming up, we have Camila Nebia and Monette Sudler with Here and Now. Time and space is all relative. Virtuality has brought the world closer through time. Imagining myself in that place where I could touch, taste, and feel like it was real. Thank you. 
Ancestors are always with me. They speak to me at different times. Times when I need them the most.
Sometimes just the possibility is enough to console the heart. Now I stay in the moment. In my dreams, I travel like the wind. If I remember, I try to understand their meaning. I visualize my future. I treat the future as the here and now because that's all there is. Hi, everybody. I'm super excited that you got to see this beautiful piece here and now. Um, we are with Camila Nebia and Monette Sudler. Honesty that you have on your, on your name right there. I love that. Um, so I was really excited about seeing your piece and I was wondering about the images of childhood and how that inspired you. Um, what were the roots of, of uh, of those images and uh, motifs that you chose? Um, when we started like our process, like our creative process of knowing each other and also creating the piece and everything, uh, our, like the main thing that we found was like that we were very interested in our ancestors and in memory and I think it came like that in a way of joining our two like stories and families into the piece and we work with archives of our both families. So that's where the images come from and also some nature images and like connecting life together. Wonderful. What about you, Manette? Yes, uh, absolutely the same. I definitely uh, into our ancestry and I uh, used a lot of photographs that that I had as well uh, from my mother and my aunt and my grandparents and uh, so 
I was just really happy to be able to include those photographs and merge them with uh, Camilla's family. It was very nice. Great. Um, so who, how did you guys come up with the concept of time? You know, you start with images of the past and then you talk about here and now being um, a, a, a kind of future. Um, and kind of melding the past, present, and future together with the title and with um, your imagery and words, what made you think about time in that manner? Well, initially when we were in our process of, of getting to know each other, uh, we sent each other questions. And so uh, the poetry or the, the, the spoken word were from some of my answers to the questions and and i believe that all there is is here and now what's gone mm -hmm. is gone and the future is not here yet mm -hmm. so all we have is here and now and so camilla really um really liked that and so she felt like she wanted to incorporate that into the piece are there, what are the differences and similarities in regards to um, your generational um, differences and, and um, uh, uh, ways that, that you both see the world? How does, how does being from different generations kind of um, in, inform your collaborative work? Um. I, I don't know. I mean, I feel I, I really felt really comfortable like sharing and I didn't feel, I mean, I know we are from different generations and different worlds also because uh, we we were born and, and lived our lives in different places and uh, but I, I think like when collaborating those boundaries really disappear sometimes, no? Like and yes and and that makes us like connect with our essence and not think about any else and also i think like that here and now was also like for me very important to, uh, i'm thinking like we are all made of a lot of memories collective memories ancestral memories and and it's here and now all the time you know it's like it's always present. So I, I felt like connecting with Monet was also that we all, we bring so many things that just like transcend, transcend our age and our uh, everything, you know? It's like we share so much that sometimes we are not aware of that. So that here and now was also a way of remembering to connect always with the present. Mon Monette, how long did it take you to write the spoken word? Oh, it didn't take long at all. I mean, you know, it just kind of uh, went through the questions that we sent each other and, and just answered them honestly, the way I was mm. feeling. So, it, uh, yeah. Wonderful. Um, well, we're going to uh, wrap this up in a moment, but Tell me your favorite um, experiences uh, musically um, with one another. Well, I, I just like the collaboration. I mean, um, and it was very interesting to, to work with somebody that's in another country, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we couldn't play together, but I mean, it just melted together so perfectly mm. that, you know, it didn't didn't really matter. So, um, and, you know, I, I played my, you know, the underlying music here in, in my living room and then, you know, sent it to Camilla and she, she played, you know, like over that and it was like, like we had played it in the same room. It was perfect. It was yeah. very natural, right? Very, very much. So. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And it's just, just amazing how you how uh, you can do that. So 
mm-hmm. you know, technology and um, Zoom and and even the COVID has brought to light a lot of the different things that I wouldn't thought was possible before. So mm-hmm. it's cool. Yes. Also, I feel like uh, I also enjoyed, like for me, the collaboration was an amazing experience. Uh, and I also like really enjoyed the process to get to the collaboration, like listening to all of the of Monet music, getting deep to that and sharing also my music to her and sharing questions and sharing us. We also send like some melodies to each other, improvised melodies that we felt. And like all, I felt like, like all the process was so beautiful because it was so uncertain where it was going to come out of that. Mm-hmm. And, and finally putting everything together was like magical. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I wanna thank you both so much for your collaborative music, for your art, um, for the wonderful project that you put together. And it's just so exciting to see these um, these beautiful pieces emerge. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Camilla. Oh, I thank you, Winnet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so exciting. Shanta Nurala and Gnavia Duriswamy are performing their piece, My Eyes. Some months ago, I I made a vision board, but today. Recognize my own Thank you. 
she seems so
Yay, that was incredible. I am so happy to have seen this piece. It was really um, beautiful. And with me, I have Shanta and Gnavia, um, who composed and produced this piece called My Eyes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, I really loved um, the visuals and how everything was kind of flowy and fluid. What was the significance behind water and behind some of the abstract photography that you used for the piece? Well, we have to admit that our videographer was uh, the in-house Mariana. Hmm selected all of the images to go with our music. Wonderful. Tell so, me about the writing process, Shanta. Uh, it, it started out as a, a poem I wrote in response to teaching and performing online. Mm -hmm. uh, during the pandemic. Uh, and there were all of these people who weren't turning on their cameras. Mm. And I was very frustrated with all of the black boxes that were confronting me and, and how I couldn't see people's eyes. And, and uh, I was ar already uh, really uh, you know, craving that interaction with audiences. And here I was performing for people that, who, who weren't looking at me. Mm. And uh, then I was looking at, so I was looking at myself and, and I wasn't liking who I was seeing, you know, I, I was looking at myself and I was, I wasn't recognizing myself. I was, um, I, I looked, I looked old to me. I looked, I, I, I just didn't, I didn't recognize the person I was seeing who was looking back at me. So in my frustration about all of this, I, I wrote this piece. And, well, uh, you look beautiful, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've recovered. Don't worry about that. I've been out in the sunlight. I've seen a few people now. I got my vaccine, you know, so I've been interacting with people. I feel a little better than I felt uh, back in January. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so tell me about the um, the music. The pieces are pretty minimal. Um, why did you decide to kind of write these, uh, this minimal, somewhat minimal composition? I think that uh, our relationship to what is minimal wholly depends on uh, what you're used to listening to. Um, because if you come from, come from a tradition or a sonic tradition uh, close to mine, it may not be read as minimal, it would just be read as what is very typical of this kind of song making, the kind of song making that comes from singing poetry. Um, and the tradition that I grew up in uh, very uh, commonly venerates poetry by turning it into song. So it, this gave me the opportunity to venerate someone in the now that I respect by turning into song. And uh, I'm grateful that Shanta was amenable to the idea of of singing a poem that she had, she had uh, taken the time to speak to me. Um, even though I very, very recently started playing the double bass, uh, it, of the, it's a very common image of a South Asian woman to be singing alongside another four stringed instrument, the tambura. The only difference is that in the tambura, you don't actually have any notes outside of the open strings that you're playing. Mm. So feels like some kind of middle point between those uh, sonic worlds that was comfortable enough to kind of create a uh, movement enough that we could move together, but also for me was deeply familiar and deeply um, healing because it's the kind of music that I grew up singing, except it's giving me the opportunity to, to but yeah, just be so fluid that it can now be done from a place of English, be done from a place of the contemporary, be done from a place of the now. Um, I really can't think of something that is more 
now and present than something that is a prayer and an assessment and a prayer that is born from like the artist's uh, life now as as, uh, as we <laughs> are speaking on Zoom. But yeah, I think that's that's where um, that's where it just came from is uh, an organic process of playing together and uh, and I do think that our relationship to what is um, what is the sound, sonic soundscape is uh, is going to change as many of us have um, have just kind of found pockets of sound that we can work with now uh, in the pandemic that previously yeah. we, just, we were used to a different scale and now I think we're we're um, yeah I think I think something's changing. <laughs> Shanta, um, how long have you been playing the sitar? I, I got my sitar in 1969. Wow. When I was on a study abroad trip as a college student in India. And I lived in India for six months and I studied with uh, Sri Bhaskar Chandawakar, who uh, gifted me with the rudiments of the instrument, and then I brought it back home to Chicago and never really found a, another teacher. Mm. So uh, I learned to express myself on the instrument and am known in Chicago as that sister with the sitar, and uh, I, I play uh, blues and jazz and, and spirituals on the sitar. Wonderful. Well, um, we are going to wrap this up, um, but I just wonder um, what both of you learned and, and your favorite parts of this uh, compositional uh, duo experience was. I think that for me, it's, uh, it's the same thing that happened to the, to the bass. Um, is that it's an instrument that I have a particular relationship with of being heard in a particular context. Um, outside, outside of the fact that it's, it's bringing a practice of mine, which is to sing poetry. Um, uh, I think that it felt like home. All, all components of it felt like home, that it was, it was expression. It was, yeah, it was just, it came from a place of singing and speaking simultaneously. And to me, all of the registers of all of the components feel that way. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to put it into words, but I think it's, um, it's just really healing to hear the sitar played exactly in the way that it's played in the piece. And, um, and for me to have the opportunity to yeah, be part of it is something that's just going to be really beautiful. Well, for me, it was uh, finding ways to weave in and out of what uh, Navia, Navia did with uh, the poetry and her, her wonderful singing mm -hmm. on the piece. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you both so much. This was amazing. Your piece was beautiful and I'm just very grateful to have seen it. So um, I want you to have uh, an amazing time off in your journeys <laughs> and you. playing music and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And thank you to Jen and Sarah for convening this cohort. It's been a wonderful experience. And now Michelle Rosewoman and Malika Zara with their piece, Arising.
So now we have Malika Zara and Michelle Rosewoman uh, talking about their amazing piece, A Rising. And I was struck by the pastel kind of uh, charcoal paintings that you were using. What was the inspiration be behind um, that form of art for your background? Well. Uh, my, those are all works of my mother. And hmm. so uh, one of the things she said in her last years when I tried to encourage her to, to paint, to keep painting was, it doesn't matter, nobody's going to see it anyway. So oh. I've been proving her wrong ever since, but it, it came really uh, that to mind that everything we might be trying to say uh, kind of mood wise or verbally that it was in her body of work and we wondered what to do visually you know we worked hard on the music it's like now what you know so her work came to mind all along and uh, that became a, a foundation for for a lot of the visual stuff because I think it's wide open uh, kinds of images that allow for well her idea was you can see what you see in it and and I think music for me is is like that too. So I think Malika was uh, really liking the idea as well. So we just kind of worked with that as a starting point. Actually, Michelle, I don't know if you remember, but uh, before we started music, you talked about the this painting. You don't remember? <laughs> oh yeah, I did talk about her work, and that maybe it could be used. I think I probably yeah. And then sent you some to see. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Um, so what is your relationship? It seemed like there was a combination of your relationships with um, kind of um, indigenous ancestry. Can you tell me a little bit about kind of each of your contributions from your culture and your ancestors in the piece? But I think I think Michel actually brought that also that um, um, uh, that, that that part uh, and uh, yeah maybe Michel you want to talk more about it. Oh, I think uh, well we started by sharing um, photos. Me, I sent her one of my mother. She sent me one of her daughter. Uh, we talked about roots. We talked about some things in common that way. And I know that uh, Malika is immersed in her culture musically and probably other ways that, you know, I'll learn about. Uh, and definitely uh, 
for me, ancestor, ancestors are vital uh, and a part of my everyday life. I honor them daily. Uh, so it was just, for me, their spirits are as real as ours uh, right here, right now. It's all very tangible to me. So I just pull on, on that, too, because I always do. And it just seems like it would be natural for it to be a part of the music because it, it inspires me, it shapes me. And uh, I could see that, you know, for Malika, it does as well on in her way. So I think we met there as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. For me too, it's like uh, my everyday life is, uh, um, there's no separation between uh, between this um, indigenous and uh, past and uh, what we are today. Mm -hmm. So musically, how natural was it for you to to come together? What what was the the core, the first layer of music that you started with in your composition? That's interesting to to create something with someone that you don't know in another. <laughs> In another territory uh, of a continent, um, uh, I actually I am. Michel told me, well, you should maybe propose something and going back and forth. And uh, I started something, and then we went back and forth. Mm. Um, yeah, it seemed natural to that the seed idea should come from Malika, uh, something vocally that would be totally home for her that we could build on. So we started with uh, with the vocal bass line that you hear early on in the piece. Uh, mm. and, and that was a takeoff point in every way, um, the way it built from there, me working in Pro Tools. So I could record, my first thought was to record a, a counter bass line, a counter mm -hmm. vocal bass line. And really mm -hmm. this project was opportunity given its virtual nature for me to do uh, beyond playing keyboard or piano uh, to to bring the other things I do in because it gave us more uh, body, more substance, you know, to bring some vocals in, to bring in percussion and the things that I do anyway uh, as well, but don't bring them full force into most uh, projects, just a sprinkling here and there. Mm. So it kind of built with us sending ideas back and forth and building on the ideas that each other presented. I, I loved, it was really fun because it seemed like each thing either one of us did just threw open doors to the next things that could happen. Mm -hmm. And it really just kept flowing like that, like one door, another door, another door. It just, we seemed like we just stepped in and through and that that's how the creation happened. Wonderful. But I must say, I must say that Michelle, she really works a lot in, in it because she did a lot of editing, a lot of, she really worked very, very hard. <laughs> mm. I think uh, we both did, but the technical aspect, since I've done editing in, in Pro Tools, it made more sense to me to do it than hand it to somebody else to do. And it became a, a real part of the end product was that whole process where you can move everything around like a puzzle, really, and create more space for another idea and or repeat something and let something else happen over it. And really, the nature of the virtual nature of the project brought us, I think, both of us to really a different way of working that, that was, uh, I learned a lot from it. Me too. And thank you very much, Michelle, again. Oh, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, I think it's really, I know uh, when I listen, I feel like we, we did something, you know? Definitely. Of value. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I am so thankful to have seen your piece. It was so inspiring. And I love that you two were able to work together um, to bring this very um, colorful and exciting piece. And I loved how you both put yourselves in there dancing a little bit and playing music. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. Um, so thank you so much for your time and for your art. Um, it was an absolute pleasure. 
Thank you all. Thank for you very much. <laughs> Wow, those pieces were so enthralling and beautiful. And now we're going to invite the artists onto Zoom and you, the audience, can send in your questions and comments and the artists will personally respond to you and express themselves and uh, answer your questions about their music. Yay! Wow. Applause! <laughs> applause! Applause! Yes! Yes! Bravo! Bravo! Wow! Yeah! Amazing. Welcome, Malika, Monet, Camila, Michelle, Ganavia, and Shanta. That was really beautiful and so moving to see all your the fruit of your collaborations. You know, it was just beautiful. Now I really want us to meet all together and play together. <laughs> uh, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and if there's anyone um, who has more questions after those really uh, uh, incredible interviews, please feel free to drop them in the chat. And um, yeah, but the comments have been flowing. Um, I would just, yeah, maybe while we're waiting for some questions, I'd love to ask Camille and Monette, uh, who, whose piece we saw first, whether watching it now, you had a different feeling since you've had some time away from creating the piece how, how was it watching it again oh it was great i i thought i loved seeing it again um it's like seeing it again for the first time yeah new eyes mm. yes yes i felt like very moved like again seeing all the archives and with the music and hear monette's voice uh, yes it really moved me and it was really nice Mm. Yeah, incredible. And um and Shanta and Ganavia. I just love the dialogue and I just really today just seeing it again in in, in whole in as as a complete sound, the vibrations of the sitar with the bass and then Ganavia's the warmth of your voice. Um yeah did you have any any reflections on on seeing the piece again and and kind of feeling the process as you were listening ah and we also have a question yes can you please share your musical journey this is to ganavia um can you please share your musical journey like learning, practicing, and listening? And what do you do musically every day? Oh, my internet here seems it... to be a little bad right now. Um, so I can't tell. It's, it's coming in bits and pieces. But um, first, I would offer the floor to Shanta to ask if, if uh, any thoughts come up on the experience of seeing the piece now after a while. Oh, you're waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any thoughts, Shanta? I didn't realize how intense it was. Mm. Uh, emotionally intense. Although when uh, when we were working on it, uh, I had, wow. Okay, I did know how intense it was because I had to go back emotionally. I had to go back into that place where I was when I wrote it, which was a really deep uh, depression. And, uh, I had to go back into that place in order to to play, and uh, I had come out of that depression, and and to go back there was was emotionally draining, and to go back there repeatedly in order to uh, to do several takes, <laughs> like mm -hmm. when I would when I would mess up or something would 
fall on the ground or, you know, like the doorbell would ring or the phone would ring or something and I have to go back and play it again. It was, <laughs> you know, it was really emotionally taxing. Uh, so yeah, I did know how intense it was because I was going through <laughs> through a bunch of changes, uh, just just doing the music, uh, and mm. I really. Uh, but you know, I hope that people got how uh, how the pandemic affected me, and how how Zoom affected me, and uh, I think that Ganavia. Uh, was able to capture that uh, uh, in the way she expressed it vocally as well. Mm, absolutely. I think many here can can really relate to the words that, that you wrote and the words that Ganavia sang. Um, we have a question circling back to Camille and Monette. What did you learn from each other uh, that you were not aware of before working together? Camila and Monette. I learned that we both uh, were really into ancestry and uh, uh, we had a connection, especially with our grandmothers. And uh, so that was very special for me. Mm. Yes, totally. And I think like uh, I, I learned a lot about connections, even though like we are not physically near. And I think that's amazing and really powerful and how we, we, it was like a challenge, you know, to express ideas in distance and, but a beautiful challenge. And, and I think uh, it was a beautiful learning experience and on how to know someone and connect and share. And yes, I think it was beautiful. And as I said before, Monette, it was always super open. Like she amazed me with her openness. And, and I think I learned a lot also about that. And it was beautiful mm. to collaborate. Mm. Beautiful. Um, we have a question from Sumi Tanoka, my past cohort partner. Uh, Michelle, what was it like for you weaving your mother's beautiful work into the present work, into this work? It was gratifying and, and it felt natural and especially happy that uh, Malika was liking uh, the work and it being a part of the project it just seemed, um, you know, kind of, I guess it's fulfilling because, well, she's with me. She's in, I have some of these paintings in my home, a few, but uh, she's with me in so many ways. Uh, she inspires me from afar. <laughs> so, uh, but she's, for me, she's so close all the time. I mean, if she comes in my dreams. She, she guides me. So to be able to kind of like, oh, it's almost like collaborating with her too, come to think of it, you know? Mm. She's kind of like the third collaborator in, in, a, in a sense. And uh, so, yes, yeah, Sumi really uh, just gratifying, I would say. Mm. And Malika, um, a question for you, uh, Tatiana says, I find it incredible to create between two different cultural and spatial worlds. Uh, what kind of difficulties did you encounter when interacting? There's no difficulties. <laughs> ah, beautiful. <laughs> no, I mean, um, uh, like to always. Um, I uh, have the chance to, to meet uh, another culture uh, and uh, it's something that I, uh, I love doing because I, I lived in different places and that's so um, uh, refreshing that you learn a lot of stuff about yourself, uh, meeting like um, uh, a point of view of a different culture, uh, a, a, a mindset of a different culture. 
it's just a, it's, it's it's just a plus plus plus. There's no difficulties. It's a plus. <laughs> and Beautiful. working with Michelle is 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 great. And um, I um, we we, uh, we we established a very quickly like a discussion a vocal discussion because I'm an old fashioned. I love to hear the voice uh, of the people <laughs> and uh, and yeah it, it was really um, um, it's it's brought a lot of joy and like yeah to 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 just exchange with 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 someone <laughs> mm. yes beautiful and um, another for Monette and Camila uh, how was the process of composing and putting it all together? Did you think of it as a whole, or did you keep at it, add, uh, adding layers and sections? You can describe a little more of the process. Oh, um, you're muted. Oh, we can't hear you. Maybe just speak a little louder. Somehow the can. Uh oh. Hear me. Ah, there you are. Okay. <laughs> more, more, more. Keep it coming. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, the first thing we did, we sent sent each other improvised pieces um, just to get a feel of, of each other's music. And um, and then we sent each other uh, portions of music that we had written already that we thought would go together well. Um, and then we talked about how to put it all together, like a puzzle, kind of, in, in sections. Um, you want to finish from there? <laughs> OK. Yes, so then we started putting everything together. And uh, Monet recorded first, and then I, I recorded on top. And like the whole structure also was given with Monet's poetry that came, a spoken word that came from questions uh, that we made to each other. And yes, Monet's answers were so poetic that it was beautiful. Also, like it gave the sense to the, the piece and, and gave it the shape to everything. Mm. And then I just, uh, I, I thought of putting some sections of with percussion, some drums in, in different sections just to, to propel it a little bit. Um, yeah. Yes, actually, and Chloe, Chloe, our Chloe, Chloe Kim, yeah. uh, has a question from Man, from Monette about the percussion. Um, how is your process or experience playing drums in your composition, and was it different to how you'd approach playing guitar? Yeah, it was different. Uh, you know, like I'm so used to in Pro Tools. You know, you go in and you correct every little, and you nudge this and you nudge that and you do this and that. So. There was no nudging done on this piece. <laughs> mm. it, it was what it was. Uh, I like that part of it, you know what I mean? And, um, so I approached that a little differently than I've been doing. Recently. Yeah. Yeah. And let's see, Shanta and Gunav, yeah, another, and I know Gunav's connection is a, a bit spotty out there, but um, speaking again to the layers um how is the process of uh, composing and putting it all together um did you hear or did you kind of come to to the piece as a whole or did you kind of layer the bass first then the voice or then bass voice and then sitar or yeah curious about how those layers happened Sure, I can try again, and um, if you can let me know if, if my sound is so uh, unfollowable that I can, I can, uh, I can give it a, a bit of a pause. But I think uh, to answer the question that I didn't answer before about the background of my musicality or my relationship to practice and musicality. Um, it largely draws from a philosophy that my grandmother lived, which was 
one, to find music everywhere in the sound of the phone ringer and the sound of everything. And she did this largely as a recuperative strategy, I, th I think, um, to help soften life always. She found music everywhere. And uh, so when you hear a plain drone, you sing along with it. This is just to say that um, there are two kind of grasp at music in the now and then there's another way of becoming one with the now by seeing the music everywhere and when I try to grasp at it or aspire towards something it typically does not work very well for me um, but I think that 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 uh, that was the pre paration it was the preparation <laughs> for the piece in, on my end with Shanta as well is that the layers were first arriving to a place of being able to see in a, see a future in a, in a kind of not futureless world but a predict a world that cannot be predicted as we once were able to um, and then like that was the first layer I think the honest first layer was was finding a kind of peace and then the second layer was uh, Shanta's poetry and then Shanta's wisdom, which was, I don't want to put out something there that only comes from like the blue space of the heart. But then I wrote the prayer to, to, uh, to respond or try to, you know, uh, to respond to it. And then I, I was singing bass a couple of times. We did it live a few times together on the computer and then we just recorded it and then and then sent it um, the bass voice together at the same time, and then sitar, and then the video. But um, yeah, I'm gonna pass it up to Shanta to make sure that I got that chrono chronology. Right. So, uh, Shanta, you have the floor. After Dinavia said the the voice with the bass, then. I added the sitar. I found that difficult. Um, the uh, the bass going all the way through it. Um, there was something in the in the bass that uh, I had trouble. I had trouble with. So I had to. I had to. I had to find. I had to find my place in it. So it, it wasn't as seamless as it may have sounded. I really had to work, I had to work with it. I had to, to um, weave in and out of it and try it again and try it again and try it again. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, a question for Michelle and Malika, there's so many questions. <laughs> um, from Chantal, uh, was there something new you heard in your playing? Uh, is in this unique way of collaborating that you may want to continue exploring? So Michelle and Malika, if you can speak to that. Say it again, sorry. Yeah, is there something, was there something new that you heard in your playing? Um, in this unique way of collaborating that uh, you may want to continue exploring. <laughs> yes, I would love to meet Michelle in real. <laughs> Play <together>. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's something you, you feel like you, after all this, like you really almost met somebody, but you haven't. <laughs> mm -hmm. in, in the sense that we all usually think of. But uh, I think beyond that, musically, uh, I mean, I think we both brought what we tend to do uh, to this. And then uh, what I liked was it's been quite a while since I did anything with uh, something that I love to mess with so much, which is cowbells because they're so melodic and driving and you can you know the first thought was that and 
as far as uh, propelling stuff. So uh, I, I've always used them. It, like I, I, I used to lead youth choirs, and I'd have them playing cowbells. And and um, they're so great for lo locking uh, parts together, finding the spaces, and putting something there that, you know, that uh, integrates with, with the rest. So it's kind of we did that on different levels because with the um, vocal bass line, then I found the spaces in hers and put something so that was like s similar uh, to the cowbells where I had the agogo, which is a double bell, and then I took a third bell, uh, maybe a fourth even. And so things like that, for me, uh, it kind of reignited my, my passion for, uh, I, I mean, I bring rhythm to, I, I'm just driven by rhythm, I guess, as a composer and player uh, at the keyboard, but to actually bring in the, the uh, rhythm instruments more, I would say it kind of inspired me to maybe do more of that. And also for me, um, since I've done a lot of work with bringing traditions together and finding really uh, organic, natural intersections, but working with a particular tradition that I'm so immersed in and driven by, so what was really nice for me was to kind of take those type of chops and bring them into this project with with a different cultural impetus, a different uh, melodic and harmonic and rhythmic, uh, different ideas, different basis, and then finding, using the same kind of process to find where things would meet naturally. So for me, definitely, it inspired uh, what I would hope I'd, I'll do more of and that uh, Malika and I might get to do more of. It feels like a beginning uh, to, to several things. Beautiful, yes. Um, there is another question from Sumi to Shanta and Ganavia. Um, Shanta and Ganavia, your piece seems so organic and powerful. Was it just as easy creating as it was listening, I guess, for us to listen to. Um, and I think I think Shanta did speak to some of the challenges there in, in overdubbing. Is there anything else you'd like to add to Sumi's question? <laughs> I think I answered my part of it. <laughs> Thank you. I think Sumi. so. Yeah, I think so too. Mm. I think uh, the memory step, like if I were to think about all the layers of sound, the first layer of sound was like the sound of peace and that actually took longer than it might have in different circumstances. I am, I'm sure of, of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it also... Yeah. I'd like just to be able to say, uh, I'm not in the Q and A thing over there, but just to say that really I was moved by everybody's music and mm -hmm. and um, Shanta, what what you say you went through in the process. I mean, that's what a pearl comes from, I guess you know, uh, and it was really uh, peace giving. So hopefully the process brought you there because I think it took all of us there, especially the combination of the two of you, and. Um, uh, Monette and Camille, I loved how you you brought your who you are to to it, you know, and Camila to hear your your sound is beautiful, your uh, your lines and your thoughts and and uh, Monette, you brought you brought the funk, you brought the groove, you you know you brought that too, and uh, I loved where you guys met uh, in in different you know arenas within the one piece and the way the piece built. So, you know, really enjoyed everybody's work a lot. And the visuals were, were like going on a trip, going somewhere, you know, get me out of here for a minute. <laughs> I haven't been anywhere for a while. So that was, that was nice. It was like traveling, you know. Definitely. And I almost, when I, um, when I heard all this uh, beautiful music and visuals, et cetera, I just uh, I said to myself, well, I, I, I wish we started playing first music before talking. <laughs> that was a thinking. 
Wow. Yes. Uh, well, we, we, we are going to wrap up soon. Um, I just dropped the link to day two, which is tomorrow. Um, it's going to be incredible as well. Uh, we have, um, I'll, t- I'll tell you the program. We have Clo- uh, Cleo and Richie, uh, Cleo Reed, Richie Seabright, and, and then Faye Victor and Samantha Boschnack's piece. Uh, and then we end with Miriam El Hajli and Chloe Kim's work. So you definitely don't want to miss <laughs> um, those beautiful works. And we do have many thank yous to share. Um, and again, we are in the middle of our, our fundraiser, our first fundraiser ever to M3. So Sarah has been dropping the link in the chat. Um, if you if you want to directly support these artists and our future cohorts, um, you know where to go uh, to our donate page. And it, it, it really just goes directly to the artist. So, um, yeah, yeah. There, there are many ways also to support us aside from donations. We always appreciate pro bono tech support, rehearsal or performance space, touring, booking, publicity, networking, expertise, sharing. So um, I think reach out to us if you feel like you have something that could further uh, the work of mutual mentorship for musicians. Yes, and we really want to thank in a huge way, uh, Vanessa Reed, Frank O'Terry, and everyone at New Music USA for co-commissioning these pieces um, for this current cohort, for supporting this uh, winter solstice 2020 cohort. And huge thanks to Nancy and Joe Walker and our fiscal sponsor, New York Foundation for the Arts. And more thanks to our amazing engineer, audio engineer, Andrea Ambro, uh, our videographer, Mariana Meraz, for helping many of our cohort members with their works. Uh, special thanks to Emily Brookwalter, uh, Michael Dessen, to our host, the National Jazz Museum in Harlem, uh, who has graciously uh, invited us to host um, the, our first in festival and who uh, is hosting us again second time. And um, to our editor-in-chief, Jordana Elizabeth. And actually, we want to thank everyone who has supported us uh, so far. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yes, and thank you. Thank you, Jen and, uh, and Sarah for putting this amazing Thing together. Oh, Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> so join wow. us tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time uh, to see the second part of this festival. Yay. Yay. Oh, and it will be, we will stream through National Jazz Museum in Harlem's uh, Facebook page. Someone was asking if they'll get to see these again. Um, so keep an eye out and tomorrow will be streamed as well on Facebook. And, uh, but you're here now. So thank you for <laughs> joining us and being in the moment with us. So, yay. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and thank you everyone and, for coming. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yay. Hey, Ryan. Yay. And I'm going to do a screenshot. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yay.